Hi everyone, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. The Man Booker Prize long list has just been announced. It was announced last night, just after midnight. I stayed up to like hear the announcement and I was so excited by the list, I had trouble getting to sleep. I think a lot of people are gonna be really enthusiastic and excited about the list this year because it includes some really big name authors uh, who've all written really exceptional novels. So if you're a bookish person, even if you don't read a lot of like new fiction that's coming out, you'll have heard of a lot of these authors and their books. So I'm just gonna quickly go through the list, give my reactions to each of them, and why I'm so excited about the list this year. Last year I was quite busy towards the end of the summer, so I, I think I read about like half of the long list, and then uh, the, the winner I thought was a really interesting book, but I wasn't hugely crazy about. But this year I feel like I'm really on the prize, and I'm gonna be really excited to read the entire long list. I've already read six of the 13 books, so I've already <laughs> made good progress. Of course, the longest book on the list, Paul Auster's novel 4321, I've still not read, so I, I have a long way to go. First is uh, Mike McCormick's novel Solar Bones, and I, I want to talk about this first because this has quite an interesting history. Uh, this was first published by a small Irish press called Tramp Press, really interesting press that um, I love to follow. And it was first published last year in the time frame for last year's prize, but actually it wasn't eligible for the prize last year because they are an Irish press, and the Booker Prize only allows books that were published in English in the UK within the past year. So there was actually a bit of controversy about this, and about whether Irish presses should be allowed to enter into the UK competition. But but more recently, it was picked up by a UK press by Canongate, who gave it this snazzy new cover. And so now it's eligible for this year's prize, and it's on this year's long list. It was one of my favorite books last year. Uh, it's so daring and interesting uh, and strange. The novel is composed of one long sentence following the thoughts and feelings and memories of this man's life, this deceased man's life, who's in rural Ireland and reflecting on the state of contemporary Irish culture. Culture. It is exceptional and beautiful and I just loved it so much. It already won the Goldsmiths Prize last year, which is an award that recognizes experimental fiction or uh, fiction that's creatively daring and that breaks the molds of the novel. So I'm so so happy to see that on the list. Also on the list are the Smiths, Zadie Smith and Ali Smith. I'll talk about Swing Time first. This is a novel that I read a year ago uh, because I had the exceptional privilege uh, to read an advanced copy uh, because I interviewed Zadie Smith for a special publishers event uh, that was held last summer for booksellers and journalists, introducing the book to them and talking about it with Zadie Smith. It's the first live interview I ever did with an author, so I was so nervous about it, uh, but it went really well. She very kindly signed my novel, and uh, she said this nice thing. She very sweetly wrote about how uh, great she thought the interview went. And it is a great, really different kind of novel for her. It's all written in the first person from this unnamed narrator, and it follows her life, her friendship, the issues she encounters as a mixed race girl growing up in North London, and her experiences working for a pop star who bears a striking resemblance to Madonna. It says so much about the nature of time and contemporary society. It's a great book. Then we have Autumn by Ali Smith. Ali Smith, who I love so much. Her writing always feels so vibrant and fresh, and in this novel, which is the first in a quintet of novels, so I wonder if Ali Smith is gonna pull off like a Hilary Mantel type thing, where she writes a series of books and each year they all win the Booker Prize. But this is a novel about contemporary culture in Britain, about the Brexit vote and the country's whole reaction to that, so it's a book very about now. And it's about the friendship between a girl and an older man who's an immigrant. Because it's Ali Smith, there's so much wordplay and toying with language, and it's a story with a dazzling amount of imagination. This is another novel that I had the privilege to read uh, before it came out, that's why I have this bound copy. It's gonna sound like I'm bragging a lot, and I guess I am a bit, but I want to show you the, the way that Ali Smith signed this book too, uh, because it's so cute. She, um, when she, she signed it, she also drew a little armadillo on my copy. <laughs> Ali Smith has a thing about armadillos, and whenever we get together, we always talk about armadillos. 
Days Without End by Sebastian Barry is on the list. This is a historical novel that I've talked about a lot and that I love so much and I've talked about it specifically because I have quite an issue with the way that the publishers Faber and Faber presented it and sold the story to the public. So I was a judge on the British Book Awards this year and uh, this novel was shortlisted for that prize. I talk about my complaints with the way the novel was presented in this whole rant video so I'll link that up there rather than going through it all now. Uh, but I want to say also that I just happened to be in a bookstore yesterday and I saw the paperback for this novel for the first time uh, which looks like this. And I like the cover for the paperback a lot more. It has two men on the front cover. But in the description of the book it still just describes them as brothers in arms who are fighting in the American Civil War. And the truth is that these are two lovers, men who love each other and stay together in a long committed relationship throughout their lives. So it's a historical novel, yes, about the Civil War, but it's also a beautiful love story between these two men. Then we have Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. This novel has been talked about so much. It's actually a debut novel for George Saunders, uh, but he's such a well-regarded writer of short stories. This novel is just bonkers and exceptional and beautiful. The story of Abraham Lincoln's son who has died and his process of mourning him, where his son exists in this post-death spiritual state where he's still trapped on earth and he's communicating with all the other spirits in the graveyard. It's written sort of as a uh, drama with uh, lines of dialogue but then there's also interjections of a lot of non-fiction that is both taken from history books and some which George Saunders invented himself. So it's a really wild experimental novel but it all coheres into this beautiful story about grief and the meaning of life and I just loved it so 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 much. And the last book I've read on the long list is Colson Whitehead's novel The Underground Railroad. Now a lot of people already know about this book, especially in America because it was in Oprah's book club pick and it won the National Book Award. It's a story that famously reinvents history where it makes the Underground Railroad a physical thing that this young woman named Cora, who's an escaped slave, travels along it and as she comes out at different stations she arrives at different forms of American society where uh, racism manifests in different ways. And so yes, it's a strong story about race and racism, but where it really got me emotionally was that it's a story of this daughter um, who's lost her mother and how she struggles with these feelings of not knowing what happened to her and these feelings of abandonment. I thought it was so beautifully done and so powerful. So yeah, then next on the list is uh, Paul Auster's 4321, this mammoth 880 page novel, which is another book that is quite experimental in form that I believe it follows the life of this man told in different ways and where different action happens. I saw Oster read from it earlier this year and I was so excited to read it but you know it's such a big book, it's just going to take a lot of time. Then there are two debut novels on the list um, which actually I'd never really heard of before and uh, I'm so happy that there's a couple books on the list that are surprises to me because I think that's always like the ideal thing in a book prize list if there's some that you already know and then some which you've never heard of and so can discover. So there's a novel called uh, The History of Wolves by Emily Fridlund. And this sounds like a really interesting story about a uh, girl who grew up in a family who was part of a cult and the cult has sort of died out and there's some of the few remaining members. And so I believe it's about her like adjustment into society and, and it sounds like she's quite a difficult character um, so that makes it a very difficult process. Then there's a novel called Elmet by Fiona Mosley and it's really silly but uh, reading that title I can't help think of uh, the hair product called Elnet and Elnet always makes me laugh because it makes me think of this uh, commercial for Elnet uh, that Penelope Cruz, the actress Penelope Cruz did, where she talks about it in her Spanish accent, where she praises the qualities of Elnet. And there's this funny thing in the commercial that my boyfriend and I always repeat to each other uh, where she says, all this and no ammonia. I don't know why, it just makes us laugh so much. Uh, but the, the novel is not called Elnet, it is called Elmet. And it's the story of this family 
that live in quite isolated circumstances in this place called Elmet, under this figure who I think is just called Daddy, and Daddy gets quite angry. And it's about the community encroaching upon their isolated house, and uh, how one member of the family, I think, leaves, and his journey up north. So that sounds really interesting too. Uh, then we have Arantati Roy's new novel, uh, The Ministry of Utmost Happiness. Of course, this is her uh, second novel, published many years after her first novel, which also won the Booker Prize. And I'm sort of sad because I got an early copy of this novel and I was so excited to read it, but then I was sort of put off because I was talking to this journalist once uh, who was being quite critical about it, and so that just sort of put me off and made me nervous about starting it. But I'm definitely going to read it now, and I've been talking for a while with Annie from uh, the booktube channel Am I Right uh, about doing a uh, book buddy read along for it. So Annie, I'm so up for that now. And anyone else who wants to read it alongside me, I, I'm really enthusiastic about reading this novel now. There's also Exit West by Mohsin Hamid, uh, which is a story of refugees in an unnamed city, which I've been so eager to read and just haven't got around to yet. Then we have John McGregor's novel Reservoir 13, which actually I've already read a quarter of this novel, and ridiculously I just let myself get distracted uh, by reading other things and so haven't gone back to it yet, but obviously I will go back to it now and finish reading it. It's a story about a girl who goes missing in this town, and it follows the search for her over a number of years and how the community responds to the loss of this girl. It's a really interesting way of presenting like a community and the media and how the media influences the community and how the community influences the media. So I'm eager to finish that. And then the uh, last book on the long list is Camilla Shamsi's novel Home Fire, which is a contemporary reimagining of the Greek tragedy Antigone. It follows the life of a girl who moves to America to pursue her dreams after she had been forced to raise her brother and sister um, after their mother died. Now I'm slightly nervous about this novel because I read Camilla Shamsi's novel A God in Every Stone and I wasn't that impressed by it. I thought it was beautifully written uh, but it didn't make that much of an impression on me. But I do like the sound of this new novel um, so I will be really interested to read this as well. So that is the long list. Like I said a lot of big name authors but like I've explained all really interesting exciting novels a lot of really experimental like creative fiction. The short list will be announced on September 13th so I think I should have plenty of time uh, to read the other novels that I haven't read yet. But what do you think about the list? Uh, what novels on it are you excited to read now? Do you think you're gonna try to read along and read all of the list or most of the list? Are there any novels that you're really disappointed to see not on the list? Uh, personally I was really sad that Yagyasi's Homegoing wasn't on there, and also Joyce Carol Oates' novel, uh, Book of American Martyrs. I would have loved to see those two novels on there. The day before the prize was announced, I made a wish list or a predictions list of what I was hoping was going to be on there and uh, posted it on my blog. And I got five out of the 13 novels correct, which I think is fairly good going. So yeah, I'll post a link to that if you click show more and also I'll post links to all of the novels that I've already read if you want to read my full thoughts about these books. Really such fascinating books, there's like so much to say about them. And honestly, I don't know how the judges are going to decide between them, but if I was forced to make an early prediction of which novel I think is gonna win. Um, it's, it's really, 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 really hard, but I would put my money on George Saunders' Lincoln in the Bardo. We'll have to see how it goes uh, when the winner is announced on October 17th. So we've still got a long time to wait and a lot of reading time to go in the meantime. So I'll be updating you on my reading progress as I go, uh, but let me know your thoughts below. I'm really so up for the booker this year. Uh, thanks for watching and happy reading everyone!